Hello, my name is Rich Nolan from Nolan Engineering in upstate New York, and today I'll show you how to size a footing, a concrete footing. This would be to support uh, a post that might be underneath a, a beam in your basement. Uh, if you're a homeowner or builder, you should be able to uh, do the simple math that's involved here. So there's about um, four things to consider for footing, it's the depth, the thickness, any rebar that goes inside the footing, and then the footprint or the size of the, of the footing. We'll address each one of these. The depth, other than for frost protection, is really not that important. Here in New York, we need to have the bottom of the footing at least four feet deep, and that's prevent the ground from freezing underneath it and lifting it. If you're not in New York, um, you might not have to go four feet deep. If you're inside of a basement, you don't have to dig down another four feet. Your basement's probably already four feet deep. If you're inside of a heated building, you would also not need to necessarily go down four feet. Other than frost protection and perhaps to get through some bad uh, material, if you have some uh, organic material at the surface you need to get rid of, there's no benefit for going any deeper than you have to. It doesn't uh, help the footing uh, carry any more load or not. So ideally, um, if you're in your basement, you could put the footing uh, right on the, the dirt floor or even right on top of an existing concrete slab or you could cut that concrete slab below. So uh, four foot deep in New York for four frost protection. The, the thickness of the footing, um, is important so the post does not punch through the footing. If you have a footing, concrete footing, that's sitting on the ground and you have a point load from a post sitting on there, you would not want that footing to break through or punch through. Um, the minimum thickness is six inches per code. Um, not only do you not want the footing to punch through, but you would not want your slab to bend uh, your footing to bend like this and break. The calculation of a footing thickness is more involved. Uh, that would be something an engineer would have to do. So I'm going to give you a general safe rule for most residential um, projects. If you do a 12 inch thick footing, you will not have any uh, risk of punching through or breaking through. The next thing to consider would be the rebar, the reinforcement inside the footing. Again, the reinforcement helps with the slab not punch or the footing not punching through or bending and breaking. So I'm gonna give you another general rule for that. Typically, most footings are 24 inches by 24 inches and they will put two number four rebar, which is half inch thick, each way. So if we're looking down on a footing, let's say it's 24 inches by 24 inches, they will lay two rebar this way and two rebar this way. Another important rule is that rebar, the two this way, two that way, should be three inches um, minimum from the bottom of the footing. And the purpose of that is so if there's any cracks in this footing that water doesn't get through and get to the rebar and rust it out. So I'm gonna give you another general rule for the rebar. Footings up to 24 inches, the 24 inches, should have two number four each way. Anything bigger than 24 by 24 inches, just put number four rebar at 12 inches on center each way. So let's say you have a footing that turns out to be 36 inches by 36 inches, then you want three this way, three that way, again, uh, at least three inches from the bottom. If you have a smaller footing than 24 inches on center, maybe a 16 inch by 16 inch, then you would still stick with the two rebar each way. Next, we'll talk about the most important design criteria of a footing, and that would be the footprint. The footprint is by far the most important aspect of the footing. It's the footprint, the size of the footing that's spreading that point load from your post out over the soil. You can imagine if you took a pencil, it'd be very easy to 
insert it into say uh, jello uh, versus if you took something um, that was much larger you perhaps would have a much more difficult time sticking it through the jello or whatever material it is so it's that footprint that's very important the next important thing you need to determine is your soil bearing capacity the soil bearing capacity is what will also determine the size of your footprint. Uh, there's a code, a chart in the building codes that have soil bearing capacity for different size soils. Um, you could also have the soil tested by a geotech engineer that could tell you that. I'm gonna give you some general rules. The lowest soil bearing capacity in this chart is 1,500 pounds per square foot. Uh, that's for clay, stuff like that. And then there's uh, 2,500 pounds per square foot is what most engineers would design for. Most soils can easily take 2,500 pounds per square foot. Uh, gravel, um, bedrock, that could take 10,000 pounds per square foot. If you're looking for a general number to use, I wouldn't use less than 1,500 pounds unless you have terrible, terrible soil, something that's very sloppy and wet and if you think you have that you should contact an engineer for most soils i recommend using 2500 psf unless you have clay then maybe you could drop it down to 1500 psf that's pounds per square foot so in other words if you have a footing that's one foot by one foot the area of that footing the footprint is one square foot so that could support 2500 uh, pounds per square foot and now we'll do an design example Let's say we have a ranch house that's 30 feet long and 24 feet wide and this is the basement and there's a beam down the center with two posts that support the first floor. Let's say the floor joist run that way. So over here is your basement, there's your first floor. Let's say it has trusses so there's no roof load coming down. So this beam is supporting one floor and it has two posts and uh, we need to size that footing right there. The first thing we have to do is determine uh, how much each one of these posts and footings, uh, how much load it sees. So we need to determine the tributary area or the trib area. Um, this beam here is supporting the floor joists that run over it. Uh, so it supports um, halfway back in this direction and the floor joist halfway back in that direction. The foundation walls take the other half of the floor joist. We'll just pick this post here. It is uh, supporting the beam halfway that way and halfway that way. And let's say the posts are equally spaced at 10 feet. So that would make this 10 feet here. And this would make this 12 feet this way, which is also half the span on, on either direction. So this area here is what we call our trib area, and it's how much area that one post um, and footing support. So the tributary area would be 12 feet times 10 feet, or 120 square feet. Next for the loads, uh, typically floor loads, we'll use a dead load of 10 pounds per square foot. Um, you could go a little higher, 12, I wouldn't go past 15 unless you have concrete over your floors or something. Live load, if it's not a bedroom, we use 40 pounds per square foot. So our total floor load would be 50 pounds per square foot. So the load on that post would be our 120 square foot times, what am I doing here? 50 pounds per square foot and that should come out to 6,000 pounds. So one post and one uh, footing has to support 6,000 pounds. Now if we use our soil bearing capacity of 2,500 PSF, that'll tell us that the size of the footing would be 6,000 pounds divided by 2,500 PSF, and that should be I find my right notes here. We'll need 2.4 square feet to 
of footing area, footprint area to support that load. Now, if you want to be safer, you could use a lower number, 1,500 pounds, and you get a higher uh, required square footage. Now, to get the length of this, each side of the footing, I need to take the square root of that. The square root of that gives me 1.55 foot per side. And if I want to get that in inches, I multiply by 12. It says my footing has to be 18.6 inches by 18.6 inches. Now, if you happen to be using a round footing, you would um, have to use um, the area of a circle to come up with the diameter, but most people use, use square footings. Now, 18.66 is an odd number. If we're doing drawings for this house, I'm gonna round up to 20. So, if we follow all the previous rules. So, I'm gonna call this footing out as a 20 inch by 20 inch by 12 inch thick footing. I'm gonna say with two number four rebar, that's half inch each, each way. And that's how we would show it on the drawing. You know, 20 inch by 20 inch square footing, 12 inches thick with two number four half inch rebar each way set three inches off the bottom. And that footing would support the 6,000 pounds that you would need, actually a little bit more over 6,000 pounds that you would need. So that's basically um, how it's done. Okay, so in conclusion, <clears throat> the depth is only important to achieve frost protection or to get to acceptable soils. The thickness code requires six inches minimum, but if you don't wanna do engineering calculations that are fairly detailed to be honest with you. If it's for a house, if your footing is less than um, say three foot by three foot, you're safe to go with a 12 inch footing. Um, the thickness is important to resist shear, shearing through the footing, punching through it, or bending the footing and breaking it and bending. Um, rebar, general rule, again rebar resists shear, um, failure and bending failure of the footing. General rule for footings, 24 inches square and smaller, two number four rebar each way set three inches from the bottom. Anything bigger than 24 inches, start spacing your rebar in each direction at 12 inches on center. Again, set three inches from the bottom. Uh, the next thing uh, you need to determine is your soil bearing. I would not go less than 1,500 pounds per square foot unless you have terrible soils. Uh, I would recommend using 2,500 pounds per square foot. That's what most engineers use, maybe 2,000. Um, or uh, the tables in the ICC, the building code, or call your local uh, building department. Or you can have a soils test done by a geotech engineer. I'll tell you exactly what to use. The footprint of the footing is the most important. So to determine your footing size, I wrote these two equations down for you. Once you determine the load on your footing, that's important to know what that load is, Divided by the soil bearing pressure, allowable soil bearing that you pick, pick the square root and multiply it by 12. That will give you your footing size in inches. If it, um, you're using a diameter, if you're designing a footing for a deck, it's very similar. It'd be four divided by pi times the, the load on the pier divided by the soil bearing, the square root of that times 12. And that would give you the diameter of the footing. Um, before we um, exit here, uh, we do have a product. If you don't want to, let's say you need a new footing in your basement because you have a sagging beam or some other problem, or you're taking out a load-bearing wall, you don't want to cut your slab, uh, mix concrete, put rebar in. We do have um, these plates that you can use instead, and I'll show you those in a second. So if you have an existing home um, that has a concrete uh, floor in your basement or a, even a dirt floor, um, instead of uh, pouring a concrete footing you could use our product called the insta footing plate uh, we have two sizes we have a 12 by 12 and a 16 inch by 16 inch square plate they're both a half inch thick steel um, they could be laid right over the existing concrete and because if you lay them over the existing concrete because the load acts through the concrete at a 45 degree angle the size of this uh, and the load supporting capability of this is much higher than if you just place it on the dirt. For example, you can place this one right on the ground. This is one foot square, so this would be good for 2,500 pounds. But if you were to place it on a three and a half inch thick slab, it'd actually be good for over 9,000 pounds. Our 16 by 16 inch plates 
are good for 12,500 pounds. So how they work is you just put these down on your concrete slab. You can use two of these holes to anchor it to your slab. You can anchor it with a half inch bolt or tap con screws. You can put a wood post in here, a four by four pressure treated, a six by six, four by six, whatever size wood post you want and adjust these uh, to where it hits the post, nail them to the post and tighten these down. If you want to use a steel lolly column, just disregard these. You put the steel lolly, this bolts right over the bottom of the base plate on the steel lolly column. Um, these are uh, a lot quicker and easier than uh, pouring in uh, a concrete slab. Um, the only thing is you have to be aware there will be a, a half inch uh, raised section around here So if it's a finished basement, it might not work for you But if it's not a finished basement and you have an area where you need more post, uh, this is an excellent solution